Welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to be asking the big question, is 50 kilowatt charging the future of electric vehicle infrastructure or is it the gasoline petrol head thinking of 250 kilowatts? Now this video was actually inspired by a Forbes article I read and if you want to read that full article it's down below in the description and it, it rose a question that's crossed my mind quite some time which is that we are seeing this schoolboy minds bigger than yours from all these car manufacturers they're all coming out with bigger and faster charging and same with the charging networks my charging network better than yours I'll install some faster chargers and we're playing this game of cat and mouse where everyone's racing to have the world's quickest charger and other things like AC charging is being almost forgotten about and brushed under the carpet as a side note and slower charges are almost irrelevant th these days and we're going to be looking into you know what this means and how we've basically gone from slow charging for VVs of only three kilowatts to ridiculous speeds of 250 350 kilowatts. I mean, the Porsche Taycan, we saw Porsche unveil the 350 kilowatt charging in their 800 volt system car, and then Tesla very quickly brought out V3 250 kilowatt charging. But do we need these speeds? Now, the average electric car in the UK, now sold, does about 200 miles range. They actually do more than that average. There's very few cars now that do under 200 mile range, and there's quite a lot more that do a lot more than 200 mile range, but they all do about 200 mile range, which might not seem a lot to petrol heads. Might not seem a lot if you've never had an EV before, but if you own an EV, you'll know that 200 miles is a lot because the average UK driver in the UK only does 145 miles a week. So 200 miles, is your entire week's driving for the average UK driver. And if you want to know if that's right or wrong, if I've made these facts up, all these facts, all these links, all these articles, are linked down below in the description so you can reference where I've got the average miles for the UK from, where you can average where I've got my next fact from, which we're gonna move on to. The average does 145, and the average car in the UK, the average car in the UK spends 80% of its time parked up at home. 80%, it's never moving from your house. And it gets even more crazy. 16% of the time, it spends parked at work, shopping centers, basically elsewhere that's not your home. So 16% of the time, it's also not moving. So that leaves 4%, only 4% of the entire time your car is ever being used by you. So 96% of the time shows one thing, and that's one thing that's very important, that if we only need it for 200 miles a week, and the car spends 96% of its time not moving, there is plenty of hours in the day for your car to just charge up when you're not needing it, and when you don't want it. And that brings, the bigger question is, where do we put these chargers and what speed do we put them at? Now, I think these figures tell us that we don't need more expensive 250 kilowatt chargers because we would probably just need more slow chargers at home, at our place of work, at our shopping centres. A 250 kilowatt charger costs roughly, roughly, before VAT, about £140,000 to install by the time they paid for the services, the actual charger, planning permission, etc. And that will also translate in a much higher usage cost for you, the vehicle owner, to actually use, you know, to actually pay for the kilowatts. And that brings us on to the next question. How much does a 50 kilowatt charger cost? Now, 50 kilowatt units are a hell of a lot cheaper than 250 kilowatt units. They cost, again, it's an approximate price, about 50 grand per, per charger. So still very, very expensive chargers. And it really brings into reality how, how cheap 30p a kilowatt hour is when you're paying for a rapid charger on an Equitricity site, for example, or a Polar site, because that's a lot of investment that they've got to claw back 
while also paying for electric, while also maintaining it, and while also paying for a call centre. So it's a lot of money. And the bigger question that I want to ask is, do we want to see more 22 kilowatt chargers? Because they're a relatively cheaper charger to install. There's a lot less infrastructure that needs to go in for them. It's not an expensive charger. It's basically just pulling straight from the main grid, so there's no DC conversion there. But that brings a bigger question, which is, there's only a couple of cars, and I mean a very small couple of cars that can support 22 kilowatt charging. Most manufacturers are only putting in 11 kilowatt free phase charging to their, char to their cars, and they're charging extra for it. So do we need to pressure manufacturers into making 22 kilowatt charging on cars the standard AC charging? Now, faster chargers bring in a really big issue, which I like to call time to pee. And time to pee for a Tesla V3 supercharger, if you plug into a V3 supercharger in a Tesla Model 3, to add 150 miles will take 11 minutes. 11 minutes. And that, for me, folks, is not enough time to have a pee and buy a coffee. It's impossible in a 150 kilowatt charger. So if it went to 250 kilowatts, you're going to be talking about seven minutes, six, seven minutes to add 150 miles of charge. And that definitely, 100%, is not enough time to pee. And if you can't pee in the time it takes for the car to get the range you need to set off, then it's too fast and you don't need it. Now, if you're an EV owner and you're watching this video, you've probably agreed with 99.9% .9 of what I've said so far. And you probably understand that Sometimes you don't want a faster charger. If you don't own an EV, you probably don't get it because until you've owned an EV, it's very hard to understand the mindset of how you don't really charge on public chargers that often unless you have a certain use case, which is you don't have a home charger, which yes, in the UK is probably quite a high percentage of people. But if we can bring the home chargers to you by street charging you, then in theory, you shouldn't need to ever use a fast charger on the public network. There is going to be some times where you're doing a long trip where you do have to do it. Now, I want to know in the comments below, are you an EV owner? Say, I'm an EV owner, I agree with you. Or, I'm an EV owner, I disagree with you. Same again, I'm not an EV owner, let me know, do you agree with me? And also, while you're down in the comments section, go and click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and being subscribed to me helps my channel grow, and it lets me know if you're enjoying the video and if you've not enjoyed it then let me know in the comment section as well because I need to know why you need to tell me so I can improve this channel more for you now if we all charge during the 96% of the time that our car is idle because we've installed charges at places where people sit idle shopping centers workplaces home street charging then we're not really going to use rapid chargers, 250 kilowatt chargers, 50 kilowatt chargers, e e even for that fact, because we won't need them because we'll have a full battery and most of our journeys will be within that. Now, occasionally, we're going to have to do long journeys. That is just the way of life. We're going to do them maybe once a year. Some people may do it once a month. Some people may do them once a week, but we're going to have to do long journeys. And doing those long journeys, everyone's situation and time to charge is different. If you're the average UK family, which is 1.5 children, then you're gonna understand how long it takes you to actually get out of a car and get ready. Now, if you pulled up at a motorway service station and you had the option of three different chargers, let's just say a 50 kilowatt charger, a 150 kilowatt charger, and a 250 kilowatt charger, and they are all priced accordingly, let's say, 25p, 50p, um, 75p a kilowatt. Yeah, it's it's a rough rough guide. I know that's not what they cost at the moment, but I'm just giving you a rough guide of what they that they could cost at a motorway service station. And you had the choice of picking out any of those three chargers. If you're a family of 1.5 kids with a dog, you're more than likely gonna pick either the one 150 kilowatt charger or more than likely. Uh, the family like that would pick the 50 kilowatt charger. And the reason is, the time you took all your kids out, um, gone to the store, had a pee, got a coffee, you know, relaxed a little bit from your, from your journey, put all the kids back in the car, 
and then unplugged, you've probably spent 45 minutes to an hour at the service station because that's how long it takes if you've got kids. And I completely understand there is going to be times that you're on your own or you don't have kids and you want a 250 kilowatt charger, which is precisely why I'm saying they should have a 250 kilowatt charger at motorway service sites. We definitely, definitely need at least one every now and again dotted at certain motorway service sites. But I do think that every single service site, we should have the option of 50, 150 and 250. And even, I'm even going to throw this out there, maybe a 22 kilowatt charger because not everyone always needs a full charge. Not everyone always needs a fast charge. And not everyone is always in a rush. Some people might want to just stretch the legs for a few extra minutes. And the, with the V3 supercharger only taking 11 minutes to add 150 minutes of charge, if you're a family of 1.5 kids, that is clearly not enough time to get ready. Now there is other caveats of fast charging and one of them is lots and lots of super fast rapid charging isn't particularly good for battery health and that is because batteries don't like getting hot and fast charging heats batteries up very fast and yes we do have thermal management systems and battery management systems to look after the battery but at the end of the day lots and lots of fast charging all the time will eventually cause degradation to your battery. So if we have more options of slower and faster charging when we don't need it, we're not going to cause unnecessary wear to our long-term batteries that we'll be keeping and possibly doing vertical grid storage with. We want to preserve the life of these batteries for as long as possible because A, it's more environmentally friendly and B, it saves us money and it's cheaper and it's more cost effective. Now there is millions of rabbit holes we could go down with the way charging infrastructure in the UK is going. But I honestly think that, unlike the article that is in Forbes that I've listed, where they said that maybe we need more 50 kilowatt chargers, which I think we do, yeah, they're dropping in price rapidly. You're gonna be able to pick them up for 25, 30 grand in-store prices, but should we be spending that money on putting a bank of 22 kilowatt chargers in, in shopping centers, supermarkets? Because 22 kilowatt charging when you're shopping at a supermarket for an hour, two hours, is quite a lot of mileage. It, it will add a fair amount of chunk of power. And they're a lot cheaper, a lot, lot cheaper. And in theory, most supermarkets will probably incentivize you by giving them away for free, free charging, because it makes you shop there. It's just like discounting the fuel. It's, it's a very cheap investment. Or should we be really installing lots of 50 kilowatt charges at these supermarkets as batteries get bigger? We're 50 kilowatts an hour will probably be just sufficient just to fill the battery in that hour. So there's a couple of ways we can go. I want to know in the comments below what you think. Which way do you think it's going to go? If you've enjoyed the video, give it, a, give it a thumbs up. If you've not enjoyed it, give it a thumbs down. Check out my other videos. Check out Patreon. Thank you very much. And I will see you again next week. Goodbye.